but let's, I think, it only makes sense to start with Cunningham. Mm -hmm. um, even though you made one or two films, I guess, um, before you made your first film with mm -hmm. Cunningham. Um, Charlie made a film uh, uh, of Walk Around Time, of, of Cunningham's work, Walk Around Time. Walk Around Time, which is from 68. The, the film is 72. Yeah. Um, uh, that was a film that Charlie simply made of, of, the, of, the, of the stage to dance. And um, I think it's an absolutely wonderful film. Um, it's actually a film that taught me an enormous amount about Cunningham when I first started thinking seriously about his work. And, um, uh, but then, uh, between 1975 and 1983, uh, Cunningham and Charlie made a series of about eight or nine films together. Um, so maybe you can just start um, by talking a little bit about how this collaboration came about. And, uh... Well, um, I first got to work with the Cunningham Company just purely by luck. Um, the David Vaughn, who was uh, the Cunningham archivist uh, was uh, an actor in a play I was stage managing off Broadway, and he asked me if they needed an assistant stage manager to to come along with the the company on on tour to Rome. So asked me, and I said, of course. Um, <laughs> and uh, it was uh, about two years after that. And I at that time I just had gotten a super eight camera. So I used to, and I was then touring regularly with the company, so I would take my camera and just shoot everything, uh, all sorts of things, and where we were, and in different places, and um, just being kind of that guy with the camera. Um, and I, I, um, I shot, um, I showed the results, I mean, sort of home movies to the company after a season at Brooklyn Academy and first watched it. And it was after that that he decided to, that he would uh, make videos, which was at the suggestion of John Cage. Uh, John Cage thought if he made videos that Merce would stay home and then uh, he wouldn't have to go out. He could just send the videos out. So Merce asked me to, if I would collaborate with him, and I didn't. I had never made a video. or didn't know anything about video, but I learned it from a book, and then I taught it to Merce. And so and then we made it. You know, over the next ten years, we. I was working full time for the dance company, doing various things: production manager, light designer, stuff, and uh, and filmmaker. So we had an ongoing collaboration for ten years, which was really. Great to have the luxury of time and to be able to exchange ideas over long periods of time. And then when it came time to do a piece, we did. We would address a certain issue. I would have a, from my end, a, a camera or video or film issue that I would bring into the mix, and then Merce had whatever ideas he had about what kind of dance he wanted to make. Um, yeah, I mean that. You know, uh, these are the films that I know best, actually, of yours. And um, it, it seems like one of the things that's amazing about them is that each one is a kind of fresh experiment. Um, that you're, you're, you're uh, thinking about um, the problems of uh, choreo making choreography for the camera, like he was, and, and you're thinking about how you shoot a dance, or you're thinking mm -hmm. these things together. Um, and so each one is dealing with these problems afresh, it seems to me. Um, one of my favorites is sort of right in the middle of them, locale, which mm -hmm. is... Um, that, was a, that was the first time we used moving cameras. Right. Yeah, I mean, and it's, it, it's shortly after the city cam was invented. Right, very right. soon after the city cam was invented. And up to that time, really, <clears throat> uh, the last film we made that was all on tripods was uh, Fractious, which was very, very complex, and so then we were re ready to move. Yeah. <laughs> and they really move. I mean, it's amazing, actually. Uh, Cutting out really choreographed you into the dance, mm -hmm. and um, the illusion that's created, which one knows is an illusion because of your film, mm -hmm. Roman One, which is a documentary about the making of Locale, is that um, it, you, you, have the, you, you, you have the feeling that the dance is going on, 
and the cameras inside of it and sort of finding elements of it. But from the documentary, we learned that as soon as the dancers get beyond the camera, they stop dancing <laughs> and they run around to another part of the studio so that they can pick up from there because some of the, the, the takes are extremely long. Um, yeah, especially in that, in that, in that um, there were five sections in that piece, and the first section was all one shot. And in fact, I made this job before Merce made the choreography. I mean, I figured out where in the studio I could go to, you know, to have a, a path that could go around and around and end up somewhere. Right. And then we had to close um, the studio off because uh, I was turning all the way around, and so Merce was outside watching. Um, on a monitor. That's why we had the wire going up and around. <laughs> and I guess the one that we saw, then the, the first film that we saw, Channel Inserts, mm -hmm. was immediately after Raquel. And um, one, one thing that I should mention that you don't see in this segment that we saw of it is that, uh, I mean, among the uh, experiments that, that you were making were. Um, things to do with editing and framing, and, but in this one you, you actually also, because you were moving or you were um, cross-cutting between uh, one part of the studio or one studio and another studio in the hallway, you used something called traveling mats, animated traveling mm -hmm. mats. Maybe you can explain that, because it's a really amazing effect. Well, I, I wanted, uh, after having made a few of these films, I wanted to Figure, and I, um, I don't think for the first 10 years of my filmmaking life, I never made a dissolve. I always made cuts. I thought dissolves were sloppy um, at that time. And now you can control them by number of frames, so I love dissolves. But um, at that point, it was very fluid. And so I just uh, was always making cuts. Uh, and I wanted to do something that to change shot that wasn't a cut and wasn't a dissolve, but that went with the movement. So what we came up with this idea, I came up with this idea of animated traveling mats, which are you have to do like animation on India ink on a, you know separate frames and do it you know wrap, I mean it's it's something that you can now do on a computer in an afternoon, but it took six months to do it the hard way. Um, so that, that was an experiment. In fact, I made more of them, but that didn't, it didn't, wasn't appropriate to use all of them, so. But they're, they're very, I mean, the effect is really amazing because it's as if one uh, shot is, is kind of breaking up and, dis and not dissolving, but actually breaking up and then but being it's breaking up about, around, around the movement. So. Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and around the movement is something, I, I think there's something very uh, extraordinary about the way that you are able to cut in relation to the movement. And, but that's, that really comes from having, I mean, I, that was my education with Merce. I mean, the first few films, looking at all the takes um, really carefully and sort of learning what was a good performance and what was phrasing and where to cut and, you know, and also, um, I usually always, and, and since we worked in silence, we were really just dealing with movement. Uh, the, and the sound was added afterwards. So it's really, because when you work in the dance that works with music, the music is really highly influential in the cutting. Sure. Um, so we were working direct, just with dance in silence. And so it really, uh, was very careful about about where the cuts were, and we went over cuts, you know, rhythmically and everything. And so by the by the later dances, I really felt I got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, where you have the kind of rhythm of the dance mm -hmm. in the, in the actual filming, and it's true. I think with the the plotting of the camera too, that you I mean, you see it in this film as in locale, um, the shot that we or not the single shot because we saw mm -hmm. several, but. The, the long the, the long take in which you are actually moving into the hallway where the dance is, and then you see the dance in the small studio. But that's the part. I mean, the, the dance takes place, and you don't realize it really until that point, in three different spaces: the big, well, four, the, the big studio, the stage, and the, at the end of the big studio, the hallway, and the little studio. And I cut between all of them, 
and we had a rule that um, dentists couldn't be in two places at once. <laughs> so uh, it had to really be like for real, as, as if. And then the, there's that one shot that you see that where you see how it all relates, how all the spaces relate to each other. And, I mean, it's an extraordinarily beautiful shot to watch. Mm -hmm. Also, it's, uh, the camera is dancing right along with the dancers. And at the same time, it's so complicated to know. Like, I mean, it looks like, a, I don't know, people getting on and off the subway or something <laughs> like that at the same time. Yeah. Um, so, well, let's maybe then move on to some of the other work. Um, uh, Douglas Dunn is someone that you also collaborated with a lot and mm -hmm. started with early. I mean, was, was Dunn still, no, he wasn't still dancing with Cunningham when you... When I there. first, I think when, when the very first, the Super 8 films that I did with him, he was still in the company. Okay. I think so. Uh -huh. uh, or just barely out. Uh -huh. So when you, so you had made a couple of films with him. Um, uh, there's the wonderful one that, with a piece of uh, plywood, was it? Uh, uh, Nevada. Nevada. Nevada, it's a mm -hmm. wonderful film. But so the one that we saw here, Secret of a Waterfall, you made uh, sort of immediately after you... you well, that, that was my first uh, television experience. I mean, I was invited by uh, uh, Susan Dowling at WGBH to direct uh, this video dance that Douglas was going to make. Um, so we, uh, it was really fun to do. And it was my first time going, really getting out of the studio, but really going out. It was shot in Martha's Vineyard. Mm -hmm. um, and so we exploited all the locations we could. And again, after having worked with Merce um, for 10 years, um, everyone I'd worked with after that was the beneficiary of all my, um, <laughs> all my everything I learned from work, working with Merce, but in a different way. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, in this film, Secret of the Waterfall, I mean, it's the first dance film that you made out of doors. Mm -hmm. I mean, all well, also, th it was the beginning of, you know, since I worked at Merce, in, in a sense, non-narratively, mm -hmm. um, it was a chance to add narrative. Mm -hmm. that was, uh, I mean, even though there, there's kind of sometimes an implied narrative in Merce's work, but not anything like story. Right. Well, I mean, and this one is kind of an implied narrative as well. Mm -hmm. so it's not as if one uh, knows exactly what's going on, but, yeah. but you're, yes, you're, in, you're, you're in a country house, and then you're in a field, and then you're in a truck, and then you're in, I don't know what you Well, it's just like a, a group of, of people dancing all over the place. I mean, I guess it's not really <laughs> something normal, but... Um, <laughs> and with, and with um, poetry oh, as, 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 as his music. It really a uh, pleasure. To, I mean, the whole thing was a, a lot of discoveries in, in editing that. I mean, I, uh, just how to, I mean, I, I was pretty free of about how to add the, how to put the poetry with the, with the images and really discovering the rhythm of words and the kind of shape of words. And it was really Interesting. Had you known Anne Walton before? I, met, I knew her, but not, I had never worked with her. Yeah. I mean, I just heard her reading just the other night, and she's such an extra. I mean, it's, it's interesting to hear her. As, as well, it's also her. interesting to me that uh, at this point, they read the poetry like people used to <laughs> read poetry. I mean, that declaiming right. thing, um, which is not, again, not very. Ordinary. But you know, in the um, in in the poem itself, she says something about loving a cascade of words, mm -hmm. and I think that that's actually what it's like to hear her now. Mm -hmm. It's like an extraordinary like rush of words. So yeah, it's, it's really lovely. Um, so then, immediately after that, you made. So well, I, I think it's really worth asking about when you said that this film that Douglas done was the first that you made for television. So, I know that Cunningham had actually made some works for television. Mm -hmm. the work I worked on them, yeah. right. But, so the films that you made with Cunningham um, in that period mm -hmm. were, um, I mean, you would presumably have liked them to be on television. 
Well, that we made them tell you know half tell half hours basically, and and I always thought that maybe someone would see them and really like them and say, what well, oh you should do that for television, and then we would get the proper means and proper lighting and everything and redo it somehow, but never happened. <laughs> I was I was really uh, uh, it was on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it's, yeah, I mean, there was a lot back then on television that one would not find on television. Yeah. No, so it must be a, yeah, and, uh, um, but Marshall at that time was a bridge too far for, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, and he remained that in yeah. some ways, yeah, which is what was great about it. Um, okay, but then, so, X Romance was also um, made on yeah. television, and, um, who was the commissioner? Uh, it was also WTBA, okay. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was one. Of, um, it was a very, very ambitious project, um, and then we didn't. We had hardly any money to do it. But we decided to do it anyway. <laughs> um, so it was difficult, but um, it was started out to be a project about that was going to be shot in the hills around Rome. <laughs> and then we ended up shooting it in Rhode Island in the airport. <laughs> <laughs> but that film, it's, I, I saw that just last week for the mm -hmm. first time, it's, and it's, I think it's a marvelous film, really. Um, and um, that film really has much more of a, of a narrative. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, maybe you can say something about the what narrative it was in the film. Yeah, we, well, we saw the dancing. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the, the um, it's a, a story about um, a, a woman, with, you know, a choreographer who has a dance company and they're importing men to dance with the women. They're three women and they bring three men. And then she sort of has affairs with all three men <laughs> sequentially. Um, so, uh, and then, but as I say, it was very ambitious. There was a script. We, you know, there were even supposed to be some dramatic scenes, um, and but we didn't. You know, we had a limited amount of time to shoot, so we had a lot of holes. And I was at the end of the shoot. I was just so depressed. Uh, um, I hope I never have to look at this again. Um, but I did because we were committed to making something out of it. So but it took a couple of years for them to raise the money to finish it and and then I tried to make sense of it by making it as if we were intended to just make those pieces and put it in the surround with a, a fake cable cable television program commentary commentary, commentary yeah, which is hilarious yeah, yeah. Um, well and you get to see the, the beautiful Michael Clark mm -hmm. um, uh, when he, in his in his red bell bottoms. Mm -hmm. um, so Michael Clark. So I, I, first of all, I, I'd like to have you say something about. I, I mean, there is a point in the book where you talk about um, making the documentary about Merce Cunningham, mm -hmm. um, a life in the mm -hmm. and then making another documentary about Lee Bauer. Mm -hmm. Um, these are television documentaries, mm -hmm. and and about their representing like sort of two aesthetic poles of your work, mm -hmm. um, and you know certainly there are many things to say about Hale the New Puritan, but first of all I'd just like to talk about you to talk about the the sort of the sensibility change, if, if you will, the, the you know moving from the uh, rigor of, I guess that's, I don't know if that's the right word, of, mm -hmm. of, of the coming young world, um, and moving into this London um, scene, uh, club scene, basically, of which... Well, I mean, it was really, um, I would call the Cunningham world more of a formal, formalistic, and, and what I was dealing with was really issues of of form and, and composition and the basics, basically. And when I got um, met Michael Clark and, and 
went to London and was able to make that film after a while. Um, that was my natural milieu. Uh, you know, it was a, a, a queer scene, and and I, I got to use as a, again, as I say, I got to use all the things I learned with Merce. I mean, it's as strict and as formal, but but it doesn't seem that way because the the subject matter is so much different. The people in it. Are yeah, different. exactly. I mean, there. Yeah, um, because there there are scenes. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen that film, um, there are scenes that there's, a, there's an extended scene in a bar, uh, a club, club. Yeah. Um, where Michael comes in and sort of says hello to everyone and dances with everyone, and it's a club scene. Uh, well, it's scene. also like a, you know, all, all of my films then were you know like some strange version of a Hollywood musical. <laughs> <laughs> That one, the club scene, really is sort of like um, like a Charles Waltz's movie in the Soho Fountain, where all the kids dance together, and all of a sudden, you right? Know, <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I was kind of wanting to do, as right. if they all do that. You know, we taught them that dance. I mean, it was um, in one afternoon, and we did the whole that whole shoot in one day, and it wasn't a real club. It was a place that we found that we turned into a club. So really, it's a really fantastic scene. And then there's also there's a a wonderful short sex scene with, mm -hmm. with um, Michael Clark and at which Charlie shot. And he talks about it in the book. And he says we have we had to find someone to have sex with Michael Clark. It wasn't very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, and there's also a, an extended scene in Lee Bowers. Mm -hmm. um, with uh, many, many, many amazing costume changes. Mm -hmm. just, um, I, I think, yeah, I, you mentioned a Hollywood musical, and so I'm going to make a little digression mm -hmm. here. Because you are someone who, who I think is a film buff mm -hmm. <laughs> and a television buff mm -hmm. from a very young age, right? And you mentioned actually at a few places in the book um, various films that, I mean, even from the Douglas Dunn film that mm -hmm. we saw, um, scenes from various Hollywood movies. And I basically know the film buff side of you best from um, Martha, the Martha films. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the films that Charlie made um, that you would see as you came into the club Martha, uh, sorry, sorry uh, Mother, okay. when Richard Move, whom you saw in the Rainer film, as Martha Graham, uh, was hosting these monthly uh, club nights and um, inviting various people, including Yvonne Rainer, mm -hmm. actually, was coming down to be interviewed by Martha uh, about their actual past with Martha. And, um, and so Charlie made these um, films each month. Um, in which there is an extraordinary range of dance film footage, everything from I don't know, ethnographic films mm -hmm. to parodies of Martha Graham in Hollywood musicals, and that intercut with many, many, many scenes of um, uh, uh, people in movies saying Martha. Mm -hmm. Answering the phone, saying, Martha, uh, Martha, 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 Martha. <laughs> and in fact, you made a, 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 an installation of this called Martha, Martha, Martha. Martha. <laughs> so, so I, I guess maybe this is just a. You mention uh, also in the text that the Hail the New Puritan was your version of a hard day's night. Mm -hmm. So, I, I guess it would be interesting to hear from you about. Uh, your love affair with movies and how they've how they've uh, influenced your work. Well, I when I I came to New York really to go to the movies, um, <laughs> <laughs> and at that time um, I went you know Forty Second Street because that was the only place you could see the old Hollywood movies. So we the sort of be be movies. You and I did the same thing <laughs> at midnight. Yeah, yeah. You see like a tower. And, and, and I, I was kind of upset when video came in because that everyone could do it at their leisure. I'd have to go around to these screenings all over the place, one, one at a time, sitting in the you know, third row, first three rows with other film buffs who were 
crazy. That's <laughs> <laughs> yes, I still think that's crazy. No, it's a great way to see movies. But <clears throat> anyway, I did see a lot of movies, and I had a lot of, and I was very. Um, I had read, read Andrew Saris, and I sort of tried to track all the movies of all the auteurs. And, um, so, in addition to that, were you, I mean, as I was during that period of time, it was my, like, um, total immersion in uh, being a film buff because I had a, a, a French cinephile boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And we went to, like, five movies a day, mm -hmm. and we ended up... Well, I was, at, that time, at that time, I was, I was reading as much as I could kind of cinema. Yeah, okay. So, but were you also, as I was, going to anthology film archives? And were you seeing, I mean, what are the kind of... Uh, yeah, I, 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 um, yes, I was. I, was start, I, can't really, I can't really remember how that all... But I, I was a big fan of Stan Crackage. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and Andy Warhol, those are the two... So and like Smith and Anger. And Jack, oh, and Jack Smith, yeah, yeah of course. Uh, Kenneth Anger, not so much. Mm -hmm. But, um, <laughs> I, um, I mean, I had one, I had some that were my favorites, and, mm -hmm. really. Um, and I was um, amazed by uh, Brackage and the, the, out, the, the prolific nature of his work, and just, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, people who made, um, Dance films? Did they have any? I mean, I don't know, Darren or Shirley Clark or um, any of the people who were, um, you know, Hillary Harris. At, at well, I mean, I, I, I really, that wasn't really, I mean, I saw those, but it was really like another religion. I mean, yeah. it, was, <laughs> it was a whole different well, thing. Uh, <laughs> another religion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, well, just, and to, just continue this for a moment. I'm wondering if then, somewhat later, with other queer filmmakers mm -hmm. like, uh, well, I don't know, Vernon Schroeder, Fassbinder, um, um, I was a, yeah, I followed all of Fassbinder's films. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that really another love of mine. Yeah. So do you think that those kinds of films also had direct effects on filmmaking? Well, not, not as much uh, in later, in my later work. Uh, because they were more project oriented about other things, mm -hmm. uh, but that's just my background. And, uh, I, I had one, you know I wanted to make a feature, no, normal feature film, but you know I worked on scripts and but didn't get to the production. We well, got to make a porn feature. Yeah, I got to make a porn feature. Um, yeah, so just uh, one other thing to, uh, that I wanted to mention about Hale the New Puritan, because I think it's, it, it's something to say about your work in general, is that it's a very hybrid genre of a film, because on the one hand, it's a kind of portrait of Michael Clark and his milieu. It's a dance film, so it's sort of a documentary, it's sort of a portrait. Um, well, I, uh, um, when I was commissioned, it was the early days of Channel 4, so I was very lucky because you could they were very open about what you could do, and um, and but they what they really wanted was a, an hour long documentary about Michael Clark, and I didn't want to do that at all. But so I just used that budget and made the film I wanted to make. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and did they show it? Oh yeah, they showed, yeah they showed it, and uh, they were kind of very happy with it. Everything it's. it's just as the impulse to make it, you know, at that time was making hour-long art documentaries right. where someone explained their work, and I didn't want to explain Michael's work. I thought, <laughs> I thought if you, I thought if you got close to him and saw the in the the context, that that was enough. Right. And in fact, the whole that interview section, just a little sort of a send-up of an interview, where he doesn't really answer any of the questions. Um, I thought that, you know, to me, that's really the essence of, it's just getting close to a person and hearing them talk. What they say barely matters, and most artists don't really tell the truth anyway, so. Um. <laughs> well, speaking of artists who don't tell the truth, Yvonne Rainer, mm -hmm. um, I mean, in, in Rainer Variations, uh, there are many people who play Yvonne Rainer, including Greg Gordon, mm -hmm. who's here tonight, and Richard Move, and Catherine Chalfant, 
Um, and so she's many different, she's variations mm -hmm. of, a, of, of, a, of a, of a, you know, she's many different people mm -hmm. in, in, in a certain sense. You call that film a collage film, so how, how did you go well, about that? I mean, uh, Yvonne asked me to make, uh, I think she came to a, a presentation I did uh, where I contextualized my work in, um, in, in terms of portraiture. And um, she really liked you know, the variety of, of portraits that I had done. And she asked me to, if I would make a, a film for her uh, retrospective in Philadelphia, I mean, an installation. So, and I, you know, I love Yvonne, and I was the tech director for her at the end of her performance, when she started making films, stopped performing. Mm -hmm. um, so, I kind of always wanted to make a film about her sense of humor, because I thought it was something that most people didn't know about, and I thought it was so fun, that she's so funny. And, <laughs> um, but, and it, so she gave me, I couldn't, I, I was very busy, so I couldn't really supervise the shooting. So she did, she supervised the shooting of the Martha part, which was based on what she had done at, at the club, Martha. It was sort of basically that same thing. And then she shot the different people doing her, her role in the Greg Bordowitz interview. <laughs> And then she just gave me the material in all of her archive, and that was including it. her films, including her, her films. So films. I went through everything, and and I also wanted, I didn't want to make a two-hour film, um, which could have been, mm -hmm. but uh, so I was, you know, condensing, mm -hmm. and so that I mean I I really didn't have any. I just let the material tell me what to do. So. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful film. The, the Yvonne teaching Martha Trio A, it, you know, is the best way to understand what Trio totally. is about. It's yeah. just incredible. You know, Rich <laughs> really understands the way he takes it and makes it back into grand language. Mm -hmm. this, this, this dance that is all about a kind of, you know, not phrasing. Mm -hmm. He rephrases it. It's, mm -hmm. it's just it's extraordinary. Um, uh, so, then, oh, one other thing that I just wanted to mention, it's not true of the Ringer film, but of many of the others, and not true of, of Hilda Newkirkin, but uh, Charlie's an amazing uh, costume designer as well, and um, you did yeah. costumes for, for the, the Cunningham film that we saw, for many of the kind of films yeah. that you did with Cunningham. Yeah, and the, and the, and, and, and the ghost on the darkest time, and the film. Film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and the, uh, it's something that I did for a period I haven't done it much lately. Mm -hmm. and after I met Lee Bowery, I stopped it. I don't need to do it anymore. Right. <laughs> and you're also a, a lighting designer. Mm -hmm. yeah. I still do that for yeah. Michael Clark. Uh -huh. yeah. um, well then, maybe you can talk further about the, the live um, films that you're making now, which are not in the book, by the way, mm -hmm. but um, the, the ones that we just saw a little bit about. Uh, well, they're actually, um, they're in, they there are in the book. I mean, the, I those, mean, those films yeah. yeah, I mean, the project. The project, okay, right. okay. okay. Well, not, the, not the films. Okay. Um, well, that's just what I've been doing lately, and since 2003, I've been trying to do something different. Actually, the Yvonne film uh, is one that really provoked me into doing live, uh, because I was sitting there in my editing room and thinking, um, it's very lonely, and um, and it, I feel like I'm doing needlepoint. <laughs> and if I spend enough hours, I know I can make a good film. So that's an interesting. So so it got me. It, I I used uh, live video to sort of open things up for me. Mm -hmm. And then I've explored it in various ways, including the ways you saw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you say something very interesting in the book about it that you. That you always resisted the cage, uh, mm -hmm. uh, aleatory aesthetic, mm -hmm. um, and in fact, it's, it's it's very true that you are, you know, even though there are many decisions, even in your the, even in the Merce Cunningham one, yeah, I mean, where it wasn't appropriate to not follow the cage aesthetic, I didn't. Yeah, <laughs> I know. but that since since you've been doing live films, you, you say you've become a cage. Oh, totally. <laughs> 
So, um, well, maybe we should move on and see the other the other films. Um, uh, I should say that we're going to see at the, the end of this series of, of three, three groups, I'm yeah. saying three groups, can, I'll let you say what they are, but um, uh, the final one is just a, a, a wonderful little preview of the beautiful exhibition that Charlie has right now at the Lord Augustine Gallery, and it's there for another couple of weeks, and I really urge all of you to go and see it. Um, you'll, and I think maybe this will be the taste that will get you there. So, uh, so what you Well, uh, the, uh, I think in 99 I did um, a series of installation portraits, which included uh, the portrait I have I had shot many years before of Lee Bowery, and then uh, I also worked with Ann Yokes from Dance Noise and Johanna Constantine. So, uh, and they were all installation portraits that were sort of responding to the space that I was working in. They filled one wall exactly, so that was sort of, and there was a, a line in the wall, and so I used that line as a, I just couldn't get, I couldn't stop looking at it, so I decided to just use it in the films. So that's why you see a line in a bunch of them. So the, uh, uh, the first one is just an excerpt. These are all excerpts um, from Inner Child, and then I show an excerpt from Ken, then an excerpt from Teach, and then uh, after that is the two clips of uh, Lady Bunny, who is part of the uh, show that at Learn Magazine called The Waning of Justice. So these films are basically like late, late 90s, 2000s, well, except for yeah, the, 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 the current one. The current one, yeah. yeah. The, the first ones are really late 90s, 2000 or 